Do you want to do more with your Airtable form? Are you stuck trying to build a more robust process that Airtable's native form solution just doesn't quite solve? Well, if so, you do not want to miss this video because I'm going to be breaking down a third-party form software that was built specifically with Airtable in mind to allow you to have smarter, more succinct workflows. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, and we make it our mission to help you get organized and automated with no-code tools. At the forefront of no-code tools is Airtable, and that's exactly what we're talking about today, but we're not gonna be using Airtable's native forms. We wanna go to a third-party solution that gives us more advanced functionality. So up front, let me just say that this third-party solution is gonna come with an additional cost if you decide to get on their paid plan but it's gonna give you a lot more features that you can't do in Airtable's forms natively. Now, before we get going, I wanna invite you to join me for my Airtable Crash Course. If you're brand new to Airtable, or if you've been using Airtable for a while, but you feel like it's still a little complicated and you don't quite understand how it works, this Crash Course is gonna help you understand the foundational elements of Airtable so that you can build more confidently inside of your database. If that's of interest, check out the link below and visit me at garethpronovost.com slash Airtable dash crash dash course. You can sign up there, have that crash course delivered automatically to your email. But without further ado, let's hop into the heart of the video. And first, we're going to start by exploring the structure that I have in Airtable. And I want to describe to you what I want to do with a form. And then I'm going to see if I can build it in this third party tool. So first and foremost, hopping into Airtable, here I have three different tables. I have my company's table, and you can see I work with three different companies, Gibraltar Group, Horizon LTD, and Pathfinder and Company. And inside of our addresses, we've linked our companies to addresses. So each company has two different addresses inside of our solution. So as far as we know, Gibraltar Group right here has two different addresses, one of them in Georgia, one of them in California. And so we're calculating all of that information here. And the idea is that we want to say, hey, Gibraltar Group, here's a form, your form. And when people go to this form, anybody from your company, they need to first tell us what address are they shipping stuff to. And so obviously we're not gonna give them all addresses to choose from. We wanna give them the two addresses that belong to that particular company. So in this case, we'd be looking at saying, look, Gibraltar Group, this is your particular form and you automatically can choose from these two pieces right here. But we can't natively do this inside of Airtable forms. We would have to create three different forms, one form for each of our different clients, and this would get really cumbersome. It's really unfortunate that we can't just go in and say, look, I wanna limit what people can see based on the company that I shared the form with, but we just can't do that. Of course, we could put this in an Airtable interface, but then we'd be stuck paying for all these different users who would be able to access our Airtable interface. And since the idea here is that these are third parties, these are external folks from our organization, we don't wanna incur software costs in order for them to put in orders. So how can we do this? Well, let's check out Fillout. The link for Fillout will be found below this video, so if you haven't already started using Fillout, go ahead and follow along with me there and get started with a free account using that link. Now, as soon as I get started inside of Fillout, I see this screen that says, what are you trying to build? What's their form for? Is it gonna be a blank form, so just a standard form? Or do you want this form to talk to Notion or Airtable? Of course, in our case, Airtable's on the list, so I'm gonna make that selection here. Now we get some thematic choices. So we can change the way that this form looks with just some really quick different selections here. And this is really nice because I hate having to go in and customize every single element. Of course, if you want to do that, you have the ability here to make this your own, but I'm just gonna pick one. Uh, let's go with the, yeah, the serene theme. That's pretty good for me. I'll make that selection and move on to the next step. Now here I need to grab my Airtable API key. So let's flip back into Airtable, go up into our account in the upper right corner and grab our API key. Quick side note here that soon in the next year, Airtable is going to phase out the old API keys and you have to create personalized tokens 
your personal access tokens will be more specific to you instead of overall API access, which is what we have now. So this will change over the next year, but for now I'm just gonna grab that API key. Be sure not to share that with anybody as that's pretty private stuff. We'll flip back now into fill out, paste our key in, and go ahead and create this synced relationship. So now fill out is automatically talking to Airtable and I didn't have to build any fancy automations or any kind of advanced integrations. All I said was, here's my API key, now you can talk. And so my last step here now is to find the database that I want to use and mine is called the fill out form example. So fill out form example, there it is. I can find it by searching and it's gonna ask where I want to sync up with. Now, I've not used fill out yet, so let's take a look and see what our different options are. Obviously, I can see the different tables inside of my Airtable base. Well, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and link up to my companies just to see where this gets us. So I select companies and I will create the form. I'm not quite sure what we're suggesting when we're telling it we wanna to go to a particular place, a particular table. Maybe that's the place that we wanna actually write data to, in which case I'm gonna to have to go back and make a change. But let's keep going. This is my first attempt inside of fill out. I'm gonna check it out and just call it my Airtable form. The default name is good for me. So what's it asking me to do? Well, I have the ability to, on the left-hand side, bring in a lot of different elements. So I can include images to my form, banners, logos, all of these different pieces. But down here at the bottom is what I'm looking at. It's asking me for choices. And this is an indication to me, because of what I see here, that this is addresses. If I flip back into my air table, here I am, and you'll notice if I go to companies table, that I only have one other field here to choose from. It's my addresses field. So what this is suggesting to me is that I probably should have picked my shipping request table because this is the table where I want the form to be reflected. And so let me go back and see if I can't recreate those steps. So here I've gone ahead and recreated this form a second time, same everything except that I'm pointing at my shipping request table and I'm gonna create the form again. So now uh, this is gonna be my second form. So let's call it my Airtable form two and continue. And now over here, I don't have any choices because for our shipping table, we didn't actually fill any of this information out. So let's flip back into Airtable now on our shipping request. Now the idea here is that we wanna ask people some information about what company are you with? So let's go ahead and fill out the company and this will be a link to our company table. So here I am, link to company, only one company per form. And I also wanna ask them which address within your company are we shipping to? So this is gonna again be a link to address and only one address is gonna receive each shipment. So toggle it down to one. And then I'm gonna ask them what we're sending them. So maybe I have like something like the item. And since this isn't a part of the complexity in the form, I'm just gonna keep this as a single line text and we'll be able to fill that information out on the form. So we could say something like pencils or stapler and then the last piece we wanna capture is the quantity of that item. So here I'll choose the number field type and I'll be sure to turn my decimals off because I just need a whole number. So ideally what this would do is, let's say Gibraltar company came in, well they would make that selection and of course when they look at their address, they would only be able to see those Gibraltar related addresses. And so I've conveniently named the street uh, and mirrored the street name to the company name so that we can make sure that we know we're getting the relevant data that's linked to that company. So here, I would only wanna see these two options in my form so that Gibraltar Group can't accidentally order and ship something to a different company. And then of course, they would put in whatever they're ordering, so like pencils, and maybe they need 100 of them, right? So that is what I'm looking to capture with this form. Let's now go back to fill out. Now that we've built those fields in there, and let's refresh this data. I'm gonna come up here and refresh that connection, and now it's going out and looking at Airtable and saying, ah, wait, there's some stuff in that particular table now that wasn't there previously. And so here I have my company, my address, my quantity, and where's that last piece? Ah, there it is, the item that they wanna get. So I'm gonna add all of these elements now to my form just by clicking them, it's tossing them up there, and they're all set. Now, one nice thing about fill out is it's actually giving us the history of this form over time. So over here on the right hand side, it's telling us, hey, a field has been added. Uh, we can look at some other field specific options and things of that nature. And we can go back and look at the history of this form, see who's made those changes and how it's evolved over time. 
Now for us, I'm just gonna do some quick restructuring here. I want company to be at the very top of my form, and then I want them to tell me what address I'm shipping to, then I wanna ask for the item, and then the quantity. So I can add a bunch of extra information here. I can add a caption here if I'd like to. So let's say test caption, just to see what that shows up like. Uh, I can add a default value. And so here I can actually select a default from either URL parameters, date utilities, or the current page. So that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, I can then also go into logic. And so I can conditionally hide or show these fields based on whatever I want. So I could say, you only get to see the address field if you chose a company, for example. Uh, then we can choose a button display here. So there can be button text, uh, and what we want that to change to. Then we also have advanced features here. So fields to show, field to search by, and some filters. And then we have some validation. So lots of different stuff that we have here. Let's just give this a quick preview. Now I've not really drilled into this much at all, and I don't know yet what this is going to look like. So here is my preview. I want to say add. And amazingly, what I originally see here are the three different companies that live in my company's table. Now this already is really, really great because of course, Fillout knows that these are companies and because I have a linked relationship to my company's table in my form table, it's only showing me those options. Now, if I wanted to maybe hide some of those companies, that is something I would need to do in the filter of that particular field. But what I don't have yet is if I choose Gibraltar group, I don't want to then see addresses that don't belong to Gibraltar group. And of course, what I'm seeing here is all of my addresses. So let's exit the preview and see if we can't figure out how we can make that work for us better. Now down here on addresses, I'll click here and then I'm gonna drill into the connection for this. So it wouldn't be in logic. I believe that this will be in the advanced settings again. So now I'll apply my filter so that the addresses that I see when I click on that link are only gonna show me the addresses that correspond to the company that I've already selected. So I'll first say that the company that is inside of this particular record must be equal to, and then what can I reference? Well, I can reference the page itself. That is the form page that we're on. So I can say, look, you've already selected the company at the top of the page. Now you're on the second question, which is address. I only wanna show you addresses where those addresses are linked to the company. So checking that the company on the address is equal to the company inside of this form. So I'll select continue on the company element and I'll bring in the name of that company here so that the company on the address record is equal to the company name that we've already filled out on the first step of the form. That's a little complicated, so go back and do that slowly if I lost you there. So now from here, I'm gonna click done and we're gonna preview this form. And when I select a company, let's select Pathfinder and Co. Well, now I will only see the two Pathfinder options on my dropdown for my addresses. And again, if you remember back to Airtable, it's because Airtable on the address table, we have uh, that linked relationship to the company. And so that's the filter that we've applied in our form to say that we only wanna show addresses where the form has Pathfinder and company because again, back on our form, that's the selection we made at the very top. So how cool is that? I can only pick from the Pathfinder addresses. So I'll make a selection there and I'm going to order erasers. I'm really into stationary today and I'll order 500 of them and we'll go ahead and submit this. So now if I go back to Airtable, what are we gonna see? Well, we can flip into our shipping request and there it is, right out the gate, I see a brand new record linked properly to Pathfinder and company, linked properly to my address, only the addresses that were related to Pathfinder and it has the item and quantity here as well. So as you can see, these forms are incredibly more powerful than the native forms offered inside of Airtable. I hope you got a ton out of this video and if you haven't already started using Fillout, please consider using our affiliate link below to show some love back to the channel. That's it for this one. If you haven't already subscribed and you wanna stay on top of no code news, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. As always, I hope you found this to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website to see how we can help. We offer an exclusive free training that teaches the fundamentals of no-code tools, including automation. We also have some paid services available, including advanced courses, 
no-code hourly consulting, as well as custom project consulting. So swing on by to get the help you need, and we look forward to connecting with you soon.